All right, so we have a few, a, a few, a few du jour claims that we can press. Well, actually, this one only. But maybe one of our vassals is going to do that for us. He is my actually tributary state, so he provides. 20% of his income and 15% of his reinforcements. Meaning... What exactly? Where do I get those troops from? I can't raise them. Also, when does a tributary state... End? Huh. All right, more craftsmen wanting to build craftsmen related activities and things, so we shall do that. Let's check how this is going. Could go for heavy infantry or wait for this. We're not really using much of the retinues, to be quite honest. I think we can have much more than we actually feel there. Double the size. But I'm always a little bit reluctant, because they are not cheap. Let's have... A little more cavalry. Let's get up to a thousand cavalry in our retinue. I think that's a, a fair number. Excuse me? Countess Durilia of the Empty Pockets has declared Cathania's in war for Edwell's claim on Clifford on Emp- Excuse me? Excuse me? Excuse me? Come again? She didn't even get out of her own country. Oh, this is clearly a dub. For my retinue. Oh. Alright, okay. The faithful prepare for war. A messenger approaches us with a letter from the Vatican. From the Vicar of Christ himself. He is asking us to prepare our men to fight against the heathens and infidels to restore Christendom to the lost places of the world. The Pope wants to send our faithful Christian men against West Francia. The region is held by Mohammed Ma by, by someone who is clearly not a Christian, just going by his name, and it is time to return it to Christianity once more. Though the Pope wants to invade West Francia, a pious Christian could convince everyone to focus on another objective that is of more value to us. But well, we could pledge to this. So let us take a little look here. West Francia is partially these pieces here. And he would like... <laughs> Okay, let's let's take a little look here. Okay, so white is Christian, is Catholic, right? What what do we see? What do we see? Very little. Very little indeed. It's me and the Lombards, and the Lombards. Look at that joke. What ten thousand? Where did that come from? Okay, well I take the joke thing back. He's, he's not he's not bad. He's not bad indeed. Well, the last time I looked at him, he wasn't that far out. He was, like, up to here. Okay. Well, if if Lombardy and I team up against this dude, we have pretty much no chance. <laughs> uh, especially, this is something about the Muslims that you need to know. The Muslims have a lot of cavalry. And their armies absolutely destroy Christian rulers. So, unless the Saxons join... Pile on on them, which is very unlikely, 
Because they're not Christian. They don't care. Uh, this is going to be a very short-lived war. So we're not going to immediately pledge our troops to this. I think we should consider preparing our men. Okay. Someone has been touched by God and thus converted. Speaking of touching people by God. Our court chaplain was forgotten a little bit. Alright. Who are you? I don't know. What you did, you became... Oh, we didn't check our wife anyway. Wait a minute. You were a genius when I married you. I don't know who that reflects on. Does this reflect on me? That she is now quick rather than a genius? Alright. Good. So some of the craftsmen that we founded have been successful. So there we go. A little bit of money that we can pour into our little project here. And we're going to start building castle fortification as well because we're a little bit too attractive for raiders. And we'll want to keep those away. So while not increasing our military strength, it increases our military resistance slightly. What do we need for the hospital again? Construction to... Where's con... Let's do this. It costs us barely anything. We can build a little bit in the hospital, maybe. Now, I don't want to build a fort. Forts... Forts are something you very rarely ever need. Um, it's something you build when you attack against... A pagan homeland. Because it helps deal with the attrition. That's all it does. You never really ever build forts for anything else. But we wanted to check our hospital. Where we can only really build... A sick house currently, which costs a little bit, but... That's going to be worth it. Oh yes, our son lacks focus. Let us focus him indeed. And he shall also be a great steward. Just like his father. Oh, look who's won that. What did you... What did you gain out of this, realistically? We have now a truce. I can't attack you. Well done. That, that is, that's all you got. You, my man. He's concerned about his non-inheriting vassals. No, he doesn't get a favor. I can't give out land. Excuse me. Land does not grow on trees. Trees grow on land. And how exactly am I going to give away the land that the trees grow on? Then the trees can't grow anymore. And that's just bad for everyone as we can see right now. Global warming. Hashtag save the planet. That's how it all started. People giving away land. All willy-nilly. Left and right. Back and forth. So, at this point, you're probably wondering what is the next step? What we're going to do? Have we won this game? No. The game is won at a certain point in time, and then your score is tallied up, and then you see how great of a rule you were compared to real, actual houses that were a thing throughout history. Oh, let's check on the... Total strength, 40%. And... <laughs> okay, this is a little bit new. I've only seen this once in a screenshot uh, from my lovely, lovely love. So I need to figure this out a little bit. We can contribute to the war chest. We can change the target of the crusade. How do we change the target of the crusade? Why do we get... Why do I get to do this? What is this? Where are the Saxons? Alright, okay. So, the defenders are all these. We have a total strength of 
244% compared to the attackers who are still building up. What is a beneficiary? This is the character I have chosen to be my beneficiary. A beneficiary might be made into a ruler in the Crusader Kingdom, should the war be successful. Having a beneficiary in a Crusade Kingdom will convey a piety bonus to your entire dynasty. Alright. Interesting. I don't know how this works exactly. So, we're going to join it just to figure out what's going on here. We could contribute to the war chest. Well, we can't because we don't have enough. There's apparently some sort of cutoff. So let's let's join. Let's do this. And we have increased the strength by a whole measly some percent. And now we can choose a beneficiary. Now we can do it. Okay, who, who should be our beneficiary? And of course, it's going to be someone from our dynasty. Let's find someone who's really pretty good at things. It's no one really. My aunt? No. That's someone young. Let's send a woman. Why not? An unlanded woman. She shall be my beneficiary. A young unlanded woman. She won't come to my court. Can I marry you to someone cool? Someone good, maybe. Him. He's a commander of mine. He's a good commander of mine. Let's have him. Have her. Alright, so... This is the prestige that has been pledged. I don't know how this works. What, what a stance. Select, decide what should happen if the crusade is won and we are the biggest contributor to its success. Should we comply with the papal suggestion, give the kingdom to our beneficiary, or claim it for ourselves? My beneficiary will get the titles. Why would I give away my titles? If the crusade is won, uh, is won the pope will decide. Alright, this is a quite interesting rework of it. Let us have the Pope decide. And it's starting April the 26th of next year. And we'll be able... Okay, let's, let's build some money up and we'll see how all this works. How this works out. Oh yeah. Patient or diligent? Well, diligent is, is good for a ruler. Or he definitely becomes patient. Let's have him be patient. I want a patient kid. Right, okay, so... The man we just... Oh, he, he appreciates it. That we pledged... Our forces to war. Let's give you a good wife for that. Someone who can help you still have heirs. And marry. This greed does not become you, woman. Go away. I don't have titles to give. Okay, according to my marshal, the peasants of Norfolk have frequent trouble with highwaymen. Let us pay some gold to make the peasants safe. Alright, okay, this, this is actually quite interesting. We're going to lose it. That's pretty certain. I mean, look at this. <laughs> they have 171% of the total strength in this. And we only have 58%. There's a lot of pledges. And there's still time for more people to join. 25 artifacts will be distributed. 160 days. 
I like this. This is good. It would be nice if it were somewhat balanced. Let's keep that information to ourselves. Okay. You want to be my vassal? No? Alright. Still don't know how they give me troops. Because I can't call them into war, but they give me 15% of their reinforcements. I don't know if that is just directly calculated in my own levies. We have 14,000 troops. It's not, it's not little. Not few. But he alone has basically double. So the two of us could more or less take him on. But he has more gold, more troops, more everything. But we're good Christians. We're going to try our best to help out in this. How's the conversion coming along? So April rolls around. In 17 days we go to Holy War. I should probably, you know, get my troops ready or something. But we're not gonna. Not yet. Okay. Okay, so we could raise our troops additionally to this. Where is my contribution? Oh no no no, these are all they, these are all pledged. Okay, we have to raise our own troops. So we have accepted a call to war. Crusade for Western Francia. Yeah. In a grand announcement of Pope of the uh, the Pope declares the Crusade for West Francia. It was once part of the core Christian lands and lords from all across the world gathers to fight for the grand war for it in a grand war once more. The West Francian lands are, has long been under the tyrannic rule of the Mohammedan infidel guy with a name, but with the upcoming Christian onslaught, it was only a matter of time before he will fall. God will grant remission of sin to everyone partaking in this righteous war. So the crusade shall begin, and we shall, as all our vassals and allies have done as well, raise our troops. And all the holy orders are already under contract. Already fighting somewhere. Byzantines. Alright. Okay. So let us raise our troops. In this holy war. How many f ships do we need? 60 ships. Might be enough. 60 ships is 6,000, 8,000. Now we need more ships. We need all the ships we can get. So we all gather here. And then we take all our ships. Let's raise all our ships. This is going to be costly, I, I swear. This is going to cost a lot of money. So now we need to send all the ships, which is a terribly, terribly tedious and annoying process. To send them all here. Luckily, ships cannot actually be sunk or attacked or anything. They just come in here. So that's pretty good. I don't actually know how all my allies are going to send their troops south. But we'll definitely see how that works out. Then all ships. Might be all ships. Ah oh, yeah. So in the beginning we'll have maybe a little bit of an advantage and a chance. Oh! The other craftsmen have also worked out. Good. So, I need to make sure this is actually still true. How many troops can you hold? Load capacity. 4,000. Yeah.
We need as many troop transports as we can have. These shall embark already and will return with this fleet once we've offloaded our... Okay, we want to have them somewhere close-ish to our allies. But we're a little bit cut off from, from all of that. We're actually very far away from anything sensibly accessible when it comes to linking up with our allies. So we're going to go attack in the north here. Oh look, Turing is coming. Where we have a good chance of spotting the enemy by having our own ships around. So we want to land in Lyon. That's where we're going to land. Is there even any faction that we need to consider ourselves with? Is he in one? No, he isn't. We'll keep the information to ourselves. So now we shall disembark our troops here. And now I want to show a mechanic that I haven't really used. Or shown. You see the fog of war. That's, a, that's an issue. We don't see where the enemy is going to move his troops. But we can use a spy because he has a sight radius of actually two two counties. So if we put our spy down here, or actually rather here, we get a good view of the inland. We'll just have him study technology here. Now the coast, we're going to cover with one ship. We're just going to put the ship there, and we're going to see the coast with this ship in, in place. Once our army has landed, we shall send our fleet home and pick up the rest of our troops. See, now we have a good overview of where the enemy might come from. So we'll just go and siege the hell out of this. And hopefully link up with an army or two here. And already we're losing gold, a lot of gold. But that's going to be a little bit better once we got all our... Um, okay, I want two armies. I want to have this one embark and this one embark. And let's split you and this one embark. And let's split you and this one embark. We want to have as many people as we can on these ships. So we're already losing a lot of war bonuses. Alright. Let's land our troops. Let's keep them together as much as we can for now. Let's move these a little bit inland. Let's combine these. Once we stand down the ships, we should be fine on money. Oh, we're good at money, actually. That's cool. All right, our, our troops have arrived. Let's pick up the rest. What is this? These are ships. Okay. Let's send a few more ships to make sure that we have a good view of the coastline. I want to see as much as possible with the fewest resources as possible. So actually, we're going to split this. Nah, we're not going to split it. To be too few. Okay, so a lot of our um, allies are actually landlocked. They will not be able to join us. In our crusade. Oh, wow. Okay. No, no, no. You stay there. You link up. Because look at that coming toward me. So we need to hope we can get our troops in place in time. This is just planes, so it's not the most defensible terrain. Let's see who we got in charge here. Our center is going to be our sieger. And we want a defender, actually. Oh, no, we're not 
let's have him here. Let's have... We don't want an aggressive leader in a defense. Yeah, let's have him. He's probably not the worst to be in there. All right, let's land our troops and put them down here. We do have a little bit of a chance. Not a great one, but a little bit of a chance. Uh, let's find out if we can't get someone here who's good at defending. Yep, no one is good at defending. All right, yeah, we're definitely caught out. Uh, we could run still. Because there's 20,000 coming for us. Wasn't there more? Did we not have more troops there? Okay, let's send these down. God, they're all streaming right up to us. Okay, we're going to link up our army. Because for some reason, he's still reluctant to attack us. Where is he going? So let's take our army and move. Because he's moving and he's locked into his movement and he's not moving here. So we are possibly looking at a chance to link up with some more allies out here let's get over there if we can and we want to stand these ships down as soon as we can okay now we don't want to fight him we want to fight everything that comes after him so now we want to fight him hopefully he doesn't turn around Okay, he's not turning around. Very good. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna slow this down and we're going to look at this this huge war that we've engaged in on the next one. Because there's some allied armies up here. The the Pope is quite quite angrily attacking there, so we we might be in a good position. After all.